Joining us now to discuss is military defense attorney Davis Yance. Davis, thanks for being here tonight. Hey, good evening. Great. So this compound had almost a dozen other malnourished children on it who were rescued by authorities during a raid back in 2018. And court documents allege these adults were trying to train the children to carry out school shootings and attacks on government officials as part of their Islamic extremist ideology. So basically what I'm asking is, do we have too many terrorists already on our own soil to deal with right now rather than risking bringing in more over? Yeah, absolutely. This is a huge concern when we start thinking about our southern border and our inability to protect American citizens. Siraj Wahaj was a Muslim extremist who was here. They had a compound in Taos, New Mexico that was specifically designed to train children for school shootings and to damage our civilian population. And this is a son of a popular American imam in New York who has been here um, teaching things that are contrary to traditional American values, but also dangerous when we talk about Muslim extremism. This is an, an extremist uh, brand of Muslim that's here. And right now we have no idea how many thousands of military aged men are streaming across our border that hold these same ideals. And I agree with you 100%. When we talk about those individuals in Gaza, potential civilians or refugees, we should be looking to Middle Eastern countries that have a similar background, that share a similar religious faith with them to take them in. But what's deeply troubling is those nations have repeatedly refused. So it falls on Israel, it falls on Europe, it falls on America to take care of these people. But we should be holding a hard line on this, securing our border and asking Middle Eastern countries who share a faith with these individuals to take them in. That they shouldn't. Of course, like you said, they don't. They haven't for decades. They just kind of use the Palestinian people as a political football against Israel. And so they don't want to take it in also because they don't want to bring in wholesale another population that then could have troubles. There could be conflict with their own populations, their own ethnic cultures. I know there's a shared religious identity, but there are factions within Islam. And of course, then there's ethnic identities. And so they say, well, we don't want to deal with it. But then the Western world goes, oh, we'll deal with it because we've forgotten that we have any kind of nationalist ideals, that we have any kind of history or tradition. I'm thinking right now of the Scottish first minister. And I know he's he's Muslim. And basically, he and everyone that he is aligned with, what they're trying to do actively is to destroy Scotland. Scotland's not allowed a lot to have an identity. Being Scottish, I guess, is something evil, horrible, disgusting. Even though they've had their own, you know, goes around with the, the British Empire and it didn't turn out too great for them, the, the Scottish Highlanders, great fighters. But still, it's, it's funny that the Scottish, we're not allowed to have an identity. We're not allowed to, to really be a people. So he says that his country, that Scotland should be willing to take in all refugees from the Palestinian territories, regardless of harm to the population he's supposed to be protecting as his, basically as his first job and first duty as first minister of Scotland. Now I say all that because my great grandma came from Scotland and so I would love to go visit one day, but one of those things, it's like a lot of European nations, you go and now you have to worry if some guy's gonna yell Allahu Akbar and I don't know, stab you at a bus stop or blow you up. It's, it's, it's really sad, do you think, how we have completely eradicated any trace or identity of who we are in the West, and it just opens us up to terror attacks. Yeah, we, we are foolish, unfortunately, when it comes to our perspective on these. We are naive. You know, I served in the military. I deployed in support of the operations in Afghanistan. So we have to understand we are dealing with an extremely dangerous ideology that, that seeks the destruction of Christians, that seeks the destruction of the Israeli state, of the Jewish state. So we, we have to be aware of that. We cannot turn a blind eye to it. And our government has an obligation to protect the American people. That's our responsibility, to protect the innocent. That's the first role of government. And so we need to have a sane policy. And right now, without control of our southern border, we have no idea who is coming in, simply walking across the border that could be bringing these dangerous ideas with them. You know, and that was the idea when I was a kid, at least in the early mid 2000s, that we have to fight them over there so we don't have to fight them here. But then there came a time because of our just exploited, like you said, the southern border and immigration in general has just been so exploited for so many years that it became true instead that our soldiers serving overseas, they had to be even more worried that if their kids and family at home could end up in a terror attack. We saw what happened in Nice. We saw what happened in Manchester and London and San Bernardino and New York and Pensacola. So many more sites that I could be naming right now. So I, I think that says a lot right there that maybe instead of going in search for monsters, we should have made ourselves 
stronger at home and then therefore as Ronald Reagan would always say who's been attacked for being too strong it just doesn't work out that way but the weaker you make yourself then that's when you start to invite those attacks now Biden when he was being asked about what's going on right now with Gaza and then those allegations that Israel bombed a hospital and of course now it seems more likely that Hamas did that but again as they say the lie goes around faster than the truth does uh, so what we saw was a lot of protests a lot of deadly rioting around the world because of that and then Biden he just says well maybe the terrorists should learn to sh shoot straighter. I mean, what kind of response is that? Uh, well, it's deeply troubling. I mean, unfortunately, President Biden is supposed to be the commander in chief of our military, is supposed to be the most powerful person in the world leading our nation. And, and it seems like he is incapable of doing that. This isn't just a stuttering issue. This is saying things that, that don't make sense, that are illogical. And you can just look at, you know, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken's face as these things are being said. This doesn't project strength. And it's deeply concerning when we think about the president's capacity to be the commander in chief and lead us in dangerous times. Uh, deeply, deeply concerning. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like this when we talk about um, the capabilities and just the mental faculties of the president. And also there's the allegation that the Biden White House may have been doxing special forces. And like I admitted earlier, I, I don't have the keen eye to, to be able to determine what those uniforms show about who was in the pictures with Biden. But I do know they did take down those photos. If, if you got a good look at it, can you tell me anything about what you saw with that picture and if anything was done wrong by the Biden White House in posting that picture so publicly? Uh, 100% the wrong thing to do. What I can say is these individuals are are pure are clearly part of a special operations group. They were called first responders in this port, but that's clearly who they are. I don't want to say any more than that, but you can. There are distinguishing markings that lead you to that conclusion. This is an extremely dangerous thing to do. It does put. Um, the tip of the spear guys at risk. It puts their families at risk if they're identified. Even things like the tattoos on their arms, frankly, we shouldn't be showing those um, because that could be used to identify them. So it's a very reckless and dangerous thing to do. And it shows you a White House that's more concerned about photo ops and the politics of this than they are even understanding the military system. But that's the problem. This is a White House that has very few individuals in it advising the president that have actual combat experience or really even understand how military operations work. Um, and it continues to create serious issues for our military. And I think that's the important point to stick on because we talk so often about Biden being the empty suit, the puppet, that there's just a lot of other interests behind him that just kind of guide him to where they want to go because obviously you knock and there's there's really no one home. Again, we can all kind of say, even some on the left have now started to kind of say, well, yeah, maybe maybe he's not as you know clear-eyed as he used to be. So it's a little more obvious now, I think, or at least more people are willing to say. But then like you were saying, well, then what does it mean on who's doing the string polling and who is leading him because then like you said well there's different groups you have ideologues you have people like Blinken and Sullivan and others and they have their own ideas and unfortunately a lot of those ideas meant empowering Iran this whole time and now look how that turned out but then on the other hand you have the staffers who are running social media and it's like what Ben Rhodes said remember during the Obama the Iran deal the nuclear deal they say oh you could tell these kids anything and he meant kids as journalists he said they're all just 26 year old know nothings who just got out of college you could tell them anything that they are moderates in, in Iran and they'll believe you wholesale because of that do you think that's another big issue it's like you were saying is you have a bunch of ideologues who their purposes aren't good but then there's no one to counter them because then the rest are just kind of I guess college kids know nothings I, I don't even know what to call them at this point well, you know, the administration is filled with individuals who who have lived most of their lives with animosity to, towards our military and, quite frankly, animosity towards the basic uh, fundamental traditional values that make our military great. So when you have an animosity towards the military, you just see the military as a tool rather than as individuals. You have mistakes like this made because you simply don't care. You just see a uniform. You see a photo hop. How can we make the president look good, look like he's in charge? without any understanding of military operations or how it works, or even individual care about these, these brave men that are sacrificing so much to be in harm's way. Yeah, I mean, they go through so much to obscure their identities, and they oftentimes they even get to tell their families where they're going, why they're deploying, where they're going to be, what they're going to do. Everything has to be kept so mum and under wraps. Uh, I was even reading up on some of the IDs that they have, and basically sometimes they, they don't even quote-unquote exist. Uh, on and on it goes. They have to go to great lengths, and then we, we see what's going on at the Biden White House. Uh, like I said, it kind of reminded me of what happened back in 2011, those allegations. But Davis, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. God bless.